This week, new variations of the game Wordle, a wrap on spring sports, a broadcast from Intro to Journalism students, and our seniors sign off for the last time. All here on the MWHS Wildcat News. Welcome back, Wildcats. I'm Evan Vaslow. And I'm Riley Cramlish. A few months ago, we showed you the rise of popular word game Wordle. Since Wordle's rise, a number of variants have been created based on anything from music to geography. Quinn Burton and Kira Perez spell you the story. Following the success of the infamous New York Times-sponsored game Wordle, several variations of the game have been released, catching the attention of several students and faculty members at Millard West High School. I've always kind of played Wordle, but it's honestly kind of boring for me because I like to play a lot of the variations. My favorite is probably, I like to do the hurdles where you have to listen to clips of music and guess what it is. Several spin-offs of the original game have been released ranging from topics based on Star Wars, football, and even Taylor Swift. However, these games are not only just for fun, but also help students gain knowledge. Every morning in First Block, I play Wordle, Foodle, Global, Quirtle and Taylordle, and I don't say that Global is my favorite because it challenges me and it's never the same. Due to Wordle's wide appeal to everyone, faculty members have also taken an interest in these fun and entertaining games. It's got to be kind of a tie between Quirtle and Octortle. They're both very similar. One, you have to guess four words, and Octortle, you get, there's eight words that you have to guess, and you get 13 tries and they're more fun for me than they are challenging and I have a couple friends who play as well so you know we kind of compare our scores to see how we did each day. As these students and staff members continue to build relationships with their peers and gain knowledge throughout the vast Wordle variants, they hope to continue their daily wins. This has been Quinn Burton and Kira Perez with the MWHS Wildcat News. With all of our sports wrapping up for the year, here's Logan Mosley with one final episode of Sports Corner. Welcome to the final installment of Sports Corner Wildcats. Typically, Sports Corner is a way to update you on the current happenings of the sports season, but for the final one of the year, let's take a look back at all of our sports teams and highlight what they've accomplished in their respective seasons. In the fall, the Miller West student section was in full force, appearing on Twitter and Instagram with outlets like ESPN and Overtime showing off the crazies. And what was not to cheer for? The volleyball team had the second best record in the state, with a total record of 28-7 and seven, having the game of the year against West Side in the state semifinals, only to be stopped by the undefeated Papio South Titans. We also saw the development of a very young Wildcat football team, with senior Nathan Peterson leading the way, setting a school record in rushing yards in a game with 324. And let's not forget about the cross country team too, as the team just fell short of state but crossed the country all the way to Alabama, where the team placed 25th in the nation. Although the winter may have been cold, our teams were still hot. Miller West added to the wrestling legacy as sophomore Noel Blair was crowned a state champion. We also saw the emergence of arguably the two best freshmen in the state of Nebraska, Nora and Neely Gesser. The two were instrumental in the girls basketball team's success as the team went from 5-17 and to 15-9 and and lost in the district championship. And for the swim and dive team, senior Laney Woodward helped the Wildcats in every way possible as the Iowa Commit won the state one meter girls diving title. Finally, spring. What a time for the Wildcats. And what better way to kick it off than a recap of the final baseball game of the year from Evan Vaslow and Miguel Paredes Reyes. For the third straight year, the Nebraska State Championship game saw a familiar rivalry between the West and Millard South. West jumped on the board early, sending 14 batters to the plate and picking up six hits on their way to an eight run first. They extended their lead to 9 0 in the second. The Patriots didn't quit though, a four run fourth and two run fifth cut the lead to three. And with the bases loaded in the top of the sixth, Cam pulls a late yard off Dylan Dreesen, giving Millard South their first lead of the night. The Wildcats responded right away in the bottom half. Corey Kozad singled. Avery Moore reached on a fielder's choice and advanced on a walk. Then Rice Whitaker came through with the clutch two-out RBI single to tie the game. Dreesen shut down the Patriots in the top of the seventh with three straight ground outs, giving Millard West a chance to walk it off. And walk it off they did. On the first pitch of the top of the seventh, A.J. Tauber hit a bomb over the left field wall, giving the Wildcats the state championship. A very successful season for the Wildcats ended with a record of 31-6 and in their second state championship in school history. So 
also a great season for the track team, who had Sadie Millard place first all class with her 400 time. The girls soccer team also played great this year, boasting a 10 and 6 record in their season ending the district championships off of penalty kicks. And with tennis wrapping up their season, placing 15th at state, that leaves just golf to finish up their season. We'd like to thank all our athletes for putting their talents on display over the past year and wish our seniors the best of luck at the collegiate level. Back to you guys. Congrats to all our athletes on another great season. One incentive intro to journalism students got this year was a chance to be featured in the Wildcat News. The best final broadcast would be put in one of our shows. So, here's a story about the Foods class's unique finals. At the end of Intro to Food, students are in charge of planning a party and making food to go with the theme. Along with that, they also have to include one food allergy to avoid. Some examples of this can be a nut allergy, gluten intolerance, or celiac disease. FCS teacher Eliza Donnelly has been doing this project since she came to the school in the fall of 2020. Um, the main purpose for students doing this project is that um, for us as teachers it lets us know like what they learned and if we need to like improve on teaching anything else in future semesters. Students all make different themes and sophomores Maddie Kettler, Sydney Prash, and Piper Korth are doing a gender reveal theme. Their favorite decoration was the tablecloth and it was made with pink and blue splatter paint. We prepared for this project by having a lab planning sheet and we just wrote down like everything we were going to do before actually starting. We chose to make cupcakes because we thought the icing would go good with like the whole gender thing and then we could put the reveal inside of the cupcakes. Groups have to make tablecloths, placemats, a banner, and any other decorations to enhance the theme. The menu that is made must include two appetizers, an entree, a dessert, and beverages. I think it'll be way more fun making the food because we'll actually be able to share it with the whole class. We're avoiding a shellfish allergy. Another group with sophomores Kinsey Grouse and Jaden Josoff, along with junior Mackenzie Smith, are doing a baby shower theme. They have many decorations for this theme, including cupcakes decorated with blue and pink for the reveal. I'm most excited for making the cupcakes because we've never made them in foods class, and I think the decorations will be really fun. Many difficulties to overcome, from finding the perfect recipe to making the great decorations to go with the theme. All decorations must be made in class, but students are allowed to bring one decoration from home. Uh, like the students using their class time, a lot of times they kind of just think of it as like a study hall and sit on their phones. Um, but then they see the consequences of that when like not everything's done. Um, sometimes they struggle like being creative and uh, thinking outside of the box. This project can help teachers discover what goes well and what needs to be improved. Uh, a group tried to do a uh, pineapple upside down cake last semester that did not go well. Um, but they just ended up kind of turning it into like a crumble, like a pineapple crisp is kind of what they ended up doing. So they did a really good job. I kind of was just like, gotta figure it out. Um, and they did a really good job. After the project is completed, students go from kitchen to kitchen to hear an explanation of the theme the disease that was avoided, and the nutrition facts of each food on the menu. Although there are obstacles to overcome, there are also parts to look forward to. Um, it wasn't really hard because we kind of all agreed on it once we finally thought of a good idea. It was kind of just trying to figure out like, what would go best with the gender reveal theme. Both groups were able to complete the project on time and their food and themes had many compliments by the class. The groups enjoyed successfully making and eating their food at the end. It was a great reward for all the hard work put in. This has been Katie Hughes, Jasmine Robeskevich, and Ada Mattia for the MWHS Wildcat News. In our final story of the year, Samuel Whitaker kept with tradition and interviewed our seniors to learn about their time in journalism. As the school year comes to a close, we wanted to thank all of our seniors on staff. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you for everything that you've done. We will forever cherish your memories. Congrats and good luck on your future endeavors. I'm Evan Vaslow. I'm the co-editor-in-chief of the MWHS Wildcat News, and I'm also one of the anchors. Miguel Perez Reyes, co stripe executive producer. Camille O'Neill, and I'm the sports director. I'm Caden Roth, and I am the online editor-in-chief. I'm Brenna Batchelder, and I'm the entertainment editor and the cartoonist. I'm Annabelle Harshbarger, and I'm the online editor. I'm Alexis Behensky, and I'm the opinions editor. I'm Sammy Voislavic, and I'm the features editor. I'm Riley Kramlich, and I'm the managing editor. Joe Edmeyer, uh, staff reporter. I'm Morgan Weir, I'm the editor-in-chief. And I'm Caitlin Reynolds, I'm the news director. Uh, I'm Christian, I'm the staff reporter here. My name is Alex Van Gerpen, and I am a staff reporter. Garrett Wilcoxon, and I'm on this car. 
Well, I'd watched the uh, Wildcat News broadcasts in QT before, and I was like, I can do better than that. And so I joined journalism uh, because I thought I could, and it was honestly a lot harder than I thought it would be. Um, I got a lot of appreciation for all the work that the people before me did to put me where I am today. I got into journalism actually back in eighth grade when I was on the yearbook staff in middle school. I just fell in love with designing spreads and picking fonts and just the entire creative side of journalism I fell in love with. And then when I came to high school, I decided I wanted to get more into the writing side of it and the storytelling part. And so now I'm here. And then I kind of got into journalism by accident. I was supposed to be in a different elective course my freshman year, uh, but that course ended up being full and I entered journalism was just like the next option available. So I took it and then from there I joined the yearbook staff and now this year I'm part of advanced journalism. I don't really know what got me into journalism. I kind of just took it out of spite of not knowing what classes to take this year and then I ended up taking it all year. What got me into journalism was uh, just like the whole like recording and video and editing aspect. Um, that's like my main hobby and I was able to do that in this class and further my knowledge on it. My mom, my mom told me I should take some writing classes when I first started in high school and my friends were taking journalism so I just thought it'd be a good try. I just tried it, yeah. My favorite part of journalism has definitely been just kind of like telling people stories all throughout the school, you know, meeting new people, finding new interesting ways to um, cover different things in the school and, um, you know, just all the cool things I've uh, been a part of while on staff, you know. I've been on the sideline at football games. I've, ha I've got the privilege and honor to call um, a lot of great games, take a lot of great pictures, meet a lot of great people and everything like that. My favorite part of journalism is just getting to find out what events are happening around the school and just getting to cover interesting things and get to know people from like when I cover different events. I don't know, it's just been really rewarding. I mean, it's something I'm actually good at and getting like all those awards, seeing it actually like in the print paper. It's just like something different you don't really get out of like any other class at West. My favorite part of journalism has just been being on staff and meeting everyone and just becoming friends with literally everyone in journalism. I would say the people and then probably having the opportunity to be one of the anchors on the news. I've just liked recapping various sporting events. I'm a big sports fan so it's nice to be able to recap all the different sports Midwest has. My favorite memory uh, would have to be just all of the like state tournaments and postseason sports that I've gotten to attend as a journalist. Uh, fun fact, I've watched Millard West lose in the state championship three times so far. Uh, that's not been fun, but just the energy that those events have is something that's really unmatched by any other part of journalism. My favorite memory was working on the broadcast I did with Caden called Inclu Inclusion Through Music and we went and filmed the special musicians like winter concert and it was really fun and super cool to see the like something that the community of Omaha offers. I'd have to say my favorite memory is whenever we like finish or publish something, whether it's like a broadcast at the end of the week or a newspaper, it's like such a good culmination of, of all of our work and I really enjoy that. My favorite memory would definitely have to be all of the trips we took, so whether that was the UNL conference or our state, we have a lot of fun kind of going outside of the school and spending time together. So My favorite memory was getting to film the Miss Amazing pageant here in Omaha with Katie. We actually did a broadcast on it and we went down and filmed for like an entire Saturday and we were just getting to talk to all the people there and film footage and do interviews and it was so much fun. And then when we were there, we um, met this guy named Michael, and he like lent us a lens. But then he was just like a really goofy guy, and he always sent awesome to us. So now it's just kind of become an inside joke between us. And it's just like one of the funniest things that's happened when we were doing a story. And I just I really enjoyed it. I have a ton of memories with my friend Alex, who's in the class. We make really uh, goofy videos together, and I think just that whole experience with him has been great. Um, my favorite memory is probably making the friends Q&As and those kinds of things because it's kind of like not your traditional broadcast so it's unique and it's just really fun making people laugh. Probably just sitting in the back playing 
like the Wordle and Hacky Sack and stuff. After high school, I am going to Louisiana State University to study journalism uh, and with a focus on broadcasting and yeah. I'm going to Creighton University and majoring in business intelligence and analytics. So I'm going to go to UNO and study and major in criminal law and psychology. So then afterwards I'm going to be working in the prison system with criminals and trying to get like their like psychological aspect and help them through their hard times. I am going to Southwest Minnesota State to play softball and study communications. I am running at Concordia to major in biology. After high school, I am going to UNO. Just the people, honestly. I don't like the journalism work that much. I just love the people, and I'm really going to miss a lot of them. So I'm definitely going to miss all of my classmates and our staff this year, just because we spent a lot of time collaborating with each other on stories. So it's going to be sad to kind of leave all of that after working together for the past three years. But I'm excited to see what we're able to do in the future. I'm also going to miss my classmates, but I'm also going to miss like collaborating with them the way that we do on our publications, like uh, the paper and the broadcast. It's it, We have such a special group of people, and I'm going to miss them a lot. I'm going to miss walking into room 312 every single weekday morning, um, late or on time, and just seeing Mr. Hoburn and all my friends. And it was just such a little special place in my heart. I think that I am going to miss the people the most. Um, getting to start my day in room 212 every single morning for five days a week, every single week for the last three years has been so much fun because I've gotten to interact with my editors and staff reporters and Mr. Hilburn every single day and built just such close relationships with them and it's been so much fun. I'm really going to miss it. And then kind of the same thing here, uh, room 312 is like kind of a home for me. I spend half my day in there between yearbook and a base journalism. So just like all of the especially Mr. Holborn, it's just sad to see that we're all going, but I know we're all connected with each other. I think I'm just going to miss uh, how lazy and laid back this class is. I feel like, yes, I get my work done, but in the meantime, when I already have my work done, it's just very chill and relaxed. Uh, I'm going to miss like all the people in journalism. The staff is pretty cool, and I'm going to miss um, just like being able to make uh, content for the school. So Probably just all the people and everyone who's going other places. but. Yeah. For the MWHS Wildcat News. 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 This has been Evan Vaslow signing off. This has been Miguel Paredes Reyes signing off. This has been Joe Edmeyer. This has been Caden Roth. Brenna Batchelder. Annabelle Harshbarger. Signing off for the last time. This has been Christian Najikaitis and Gerp signing off. off. This has been Camille O'Neill for the MWHS Wildcat News. This has been Alexis Behensky with the MWHS Wildcat News. This has been Riley Kramlish and Samantha Wojcicki for, for the, the MWHS, MWHS Wildcat, Wildcat News. News. This has been Garrett Wilcoxon, signing off. This has been <laughs> Kaylin Reynolds and Morgan Weir, signing, signing off for the last time. Awesome sauce. That wraps up our stories for the year. In case you missed anything or want to reminisce, check out our social media and website. On behalf of all our staff, I'd like to thank all of you for tuning in all year. And for one last time, this has been Riley Kramlish and Evan Vaslow. Thank you, Wildcats. Have a great summer.